Let's in motion. How's it going, Exiles? My name is Ralph, and today we're getting hyped for Ascendancy. Uh, we're going to be talking about the subclasses that are coming out. There's going to be 19 of them, uh, three for each character current class in the game so duelist shadow marauder witch but then scion's only gonna get one and today we're just gonna go over the duelist um he's got slayer gladiator and champion let's start with slayer no judge no jury just the executioner this thing looks awesome so basically how the subclasses work is that there's 12 total talents here and you're going to get six points, two in Merciless, two in Cruel, two in Normal. And you get to pick any six you want, but obviously these bigger ones are usually the better ones, the ones you want to go for. So for example, the Slayer over here, he's got Headsman. Hits deal 100% increased damage against enemies that are on low life. 20% 20 20 chance to gain Onslaught for three seconds on kill. I'm not really a big fan of the on kill stuff, because it only activates when you kill stuff. So like it's not you can't your character can't utilize it all the time. But onslaught is a pretty powerful speed buff. So that's pretty good. If you kill five monsters, you're probably gonna get it. 20% chance. And hits deal 100% increased damage on low life enemies. That's pretty awesome for rares, uniques, bigger like bigger mobs, like tankier mobs, mobs with a lot more health. Definitely don't need calling strike with this. It's that's a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage increase. Um we'll go down here. We got a reduced enemy stun threshold and the 40% increased damage. This one's 40% also, by the way, just 5% increased attack speed. This one is Overwhelm. Always stun enemies on full life. 100% increased stun duration against enemies that are on full life and on low life. So that's pretty insane for stun builds. It's really a tankier option and a 20% chance to double the stun duration. Uh, stun is pretty powerful. Obviously, there's the map mod that, I mean, you don't really... Mm, not a lot of builds use stun or utilize stun as a main mechanic, but... If you really invest into it, it's a powerful tanking mechanic. It's just not popular. It's de This is definitely a great talent for that. If you want to go into it, play this duelist and then pick this talent. Up here, just more attack speed, more increased damage. Bane of Legends. This one is insane. It's insane. 40% uh, increased damage against rare and unique enemies. And 20% of overkill damage is leached as life. So if you're just like like mowing through white mobster monsters, you're, you're going to be capped on leech every time you kill someone if like you're doing lots of dps this is definitely the clear speed build the clear speed passive i mean 40 percent increased damage against rare and unique enemies you you skip over rares and races a lot of the time just because they take so long to kill they have so much health 40 percent that is gonna speed up your clear quite a lot definitely a clear speed talent um I've, I mean, you see damage against rares as a stat on the Headhunter belt, but I've never seen it against uniques, so also good for a boss farming spec, I suppose. Yeah, good talent. That's the left side. The right side, uh, start with 0.2 leech and 14% damage with two-handers. I believe all these have that. Yep, they all have the 14 damage with two-handers. 0.2 leech over here. Over here is radius, 5% radius, which is pretty good. <laughs> I think point two is a little bit too low, though. I mean, these are ascendancy subclasses. There's 12 points here. I think those should be like point four. Point four would be better. First talent, brutal fervor. 30% increased damage while leeching. 5% increased attack speed while leeching. So basically, if you attack and you don't have vault pact or instant leech, you're just gonna have 30% increased damage and increased attack speed. 5% increased attack speed. That's great. Really powerful node. Not really exciting, but it's powerful. This one, endless hunger. 5% of maximum life per second to maximum life leech rate. Life leech effects are not removed at full life. It's really nice. Uh, cannot be stunned while leeching. It's pretty overpowered. That's really overpowered, because as long as you're attacking, you're immune to stun, basically. Which is a very... That is a bigger deal than it may seem. When Roas charge you and they stun you, that stuff gets you killed. You get chain stunned, that'll get you killed. If you're leeching, can't be stunned. This is a good talent. Uh, so it seems like this, this area is definitely leeching. This is the kind of clear speed type stuff. This is just like killing big mobs. This thing is amazing. Bane of Legends. It's an awesome name. Uh, this stuff is the stun. So kind of clear speedy, big mobs, monsters, stun, leech, and then this one is radius of skills. And then here we get impact. Single target melee attacks deal splash damage to surrounding enemies, but you get less damage around for the surrounding enemies. This is for basically the melee splash gem, but built into the duelist. I think it's a good place to put that if you were going to add that anywhere. 
I'd say the support gem for people who are playing melee splash builds, I experienced, experimented with it this league in Talisman. It wasn't that great. It's kind of a little clunky to play still. Targeting is a little bit weird. I, I would like it to be improved, considering the game is speeding up a lot and the single target skills can't really keep up, even with melee splash. And also, 15% increased rate of various skills, which is a lot, because they, they increased the base of area skills recently by quite a lot but they reduce these increases. So the base is larger. So 15% is a lot nowadays. Um, yeah, this is this is a pretty cool tree. Just like two-handers, DPS, leech, just killing and leeching, not really focusing on defensiveness at all, except for the stun, I guess. I like it because bows can utilize the stun, bows can utilize this, bows, bows, bows. Because duelists play bows sometimes. I don't know. Even though he's got a sword, it's it's cool to have that versatility, that diversity within the class. This is the only one that really is only for melee. Still, none of the mechanics on this one, like this isn't, this will make you faster, but it's not that interesting. I like the other trees a lot better. Still, the art on this one's amazing. Looks super cool. He's definitely, doesn't look like a lowly fencer duelist pleb anymore. He's, he's chopped that guy's head clean off. <laughs> All right, on to the next one. Gladiator. Oh, Gladiator. You gotta love the theme. You gotta love the theme. You know what Gladiators have. Even though he doesn't have it in this picture. Shields. I love shields. I love Shields, they feel so RP to me. I wish there was more than just shield charge. I wish there was like shield bash or something like that. Let's start with the left here. 1% uh, block while dual wielding or holding a shield. And the 5% increased attack speed. These are all that same. So... Pain Forged, 8% increased block chance if you were damaged by a hit in the past 4 seconds, 35% increased damage if you've taken no damage for the past 4 seconds. This talent is awesome. 8% block is a lot. If you were damaged, you're going to need the block. If you weren't damaged, you're going to want the damage. It's a cool talent. I like how it gives you a stat that alternates back and forth. I really like this mechanic. This is a cool passive. And it's, it's a powerful one too. Go up here. There's that. Violent Retaliation. 4% increased physical damage, not melee by the way, so you could do some melee physical spells perhaps. Wouldn't be that efficient though. 4% increased physical damage per hit you've blocked in the past 4 seconds. 2% increased move speed per hit you've blocked in the past 4 seconds. That's okay. I mean, I don't... If you're fighting one monster, you're not really going to get that much out of this, but if you're fighting a big pack of monsters and they all hit you, and even if you had like 30% block chance, you're going to need a lot of movement speed. If things get sketchy, you can run out of there. I like this talent, I just don't think it's amazing. The 4% the increased is not that much. The movement speed is the better part, in my opinion. Um, this one down here is probably my favorite. Versatile Combatant. 100% of block chance applied to spells. Oh, what? 100% of block chance applied to spells. So, th that's that's crazy. And I'm 75% resistances to elemental does not feel like enough sometimes. I don't know if you guys agree. Max resist used to be easier to get in earlier stages of PoE. It's gotten easier and then it's kind of gotten more difficult. But getting that chance to block spells is really nice. It makes you feel so much more tanky. Um, I was thinking about this with some hipster lowlife stuff with uh, Duresso's Courage or something like that. 120% applied to spells. And then 100%, and that shield can get 30%, so you would have like 66% chance to block spells right off the bat. Like, you'd be immune, basically. I mean, getting spell, getting, getting spell, uh, spell block capped is, it's, you'll, you'll notice it. You'll definitely notice it. Uh, over here, physical damage, not melee again, but the no, the talents kind of don't lend themselves to be for a caster. I mean, you could with how powerful this spell block is, but, it's going to be rough getting out of the duelist area on the main big passive skill tree. Uh, we got, yeah, the small node, and then gratuitous violence. 10% chance to cause bleeding on hit with attacks, 25% increased damage against bleeding enemies, and bleeding enemies you kill explode for 20% of their maximum life. Pretty good stuff, and this one kind of, it, it combines, it's kind of related to this one. 6% reduced damage taken from bleeding enemies, that's great. 20% chance to maim on hit, Pretty sure Mame is a new mechanic in Ascendancy, and I like that they're getting Bleed involved. I wish Bleed was more uh, accessible, like Poison is now. I really don't see why there's a Poison support gem and not a Bleed support gem, considering Chaos damage is usually less accessible than Physical damage, but I digress. 25% chance... I mean, 20% chance to Mame on hit. Mame, I believe, is a new debuff. It's going to probably nerf the mob's damage or slow them or something. I'm sure it'll add damage, but it's new. We don't know that much about it. 
25% uh, increased damage against bleeding enemies. So these two talents together, it's 50% damage against bleeding enemies. I'd love to see some puncture love. I'd love to see some bleed builds. Maybe even some bloodlust where you bleed and then alternate. You're going to do so much more damage to these bleeding enemies. And I'm, so there's and there's 10 percent here. And right now on the tree, I'm pretty sure there's 16. If you did some uh, dual wield dragoon swords, I don't know. Uh, so that'd be 24, and then the 16. You got you get 50 percent bleed chance. That that's pretty reliable. I mean, yeah, you could definitely make the bleed build work. The explosions everywhere. Um, here. Same thing as this, except for instead of 10% physical damage, it's increased damage with one-handed weapons. And then we got this one, Outmatch and Outlast. 25% chance to gain a Frenzy Charge with your main hand, and 25% chance to gain an Endurance Charge with your offhand. This one's pretty cool. I know you guys are thinking, some Cleave, Dual Strike, Cast on Melee Kill, Discharge, am I right? Probably not but someone's going to make it work. Seriously, though, it's a buff to cleave, right? Both weapons, because endurance charges are so hard to get. No, but in all honesty, I love this talent because frenzy charge chance on kill is kind of hard to get nowadays. And, you know, the flicker strike love, I love the flicker strike when you blink all around the screen, you can't see anything. And um, let's be real. You had some this talent, and then you had blood dance or uh, blood rage. Poacher's Mark with uh, Blasphemy. You could get over 100% chance to get a Frenzy Charge on kill, like the good old days. And uh, if you had this Bleeding, and then maybe some Jack the Axe, or it's it's Series Disfavor, doing some Flicker Strikes, and you're just bleeding everyone, and they're dotting down and exploding in blood. I like this tree. I like the idea of these two talents. Well, these two, with these four. Or if you're going tankier to do the block aspect of it and then just kind of pick whatever it's a little weird because if you're you might want to use a shield but not be a one-handed duelist so it's kind of unfortunate that it's all for the gladiator but oh well i still think this tree is cool i love the frenzy charge on kill i love the i love the bleed and i love the the shield mechanics they added let's check out the next one this one obvious obvious tank here obvious tank you know the, these this guy's kind of in the middle he's dps and he he's he can go either or so to speak this guy's the obvious tank look at his picture you know champion that which you love he who fights for nothing dies for nothing oh gg G, G. they know me so well couldn't have said it better myself all right we have taunt in this area fortify stuff in this area this is kind of a party thing, and this is a low-life thing. So the taunt stuff, we every node has increased evasion and armor rating, every single one, 15%. And then they have something different depending on which way you go. So this one, you get taunt duration, and this one, you also get taunt duration. We don't know a lot about taunt. It's kind of like MAME, except for taunt's been in the game. MAME hasn't. But this one is Conqueror. 10% chance to taunt on hit. I don't know how reliable that is. I mean, it seems kind of low if you're going to be tanking for your party, which seems to be the objective of taunt. I mean, there's Enduring Cry and War Cries and stuff you can use to get Taunt also. But, if you're trying to do it reliably, uh, you know, I feel like there should be more than 10% chance on hit. 6% reduced damage taken if you killed the Taunted enemy in the past 4 seconds. Again, it's on kill, so you're not going to have that reduction when you're killing bosses with no adds. And those are the guys doing the big hits. I don't like the on kill stuff so much, but still, Taunt getting more love it's cool to see how they do with new mechanics this one down the road from conqueror worthy foe enemies you taunt have a 20 percent increased chance to be stunned that's pretty cool tanky again stunning them enemies you taunt take 15 percent increased damage that talent is really good but it has to be you taunt so you can't do a decoy totem or something like that this one doesn't specify that it's you you just have to kill a taunted enemy this one though if you taunt them, 50% increased damage, crazy party play potential. That is a multiplier. The monster is just going to take loads of more damage from some of your more DPS-y allies. It's a good talent. In terms of, for what it's worth, it's good. Uh, this one has the increased effect of auras, and then it goes towards this one. You and nearby allies deal 30% increased damage. You and nearby allies have 5% increased move speed, because you know the 30% wasn't enough, and you and your allies and everyone all getting it. This is a support class, clearly a support class. These, that's two points. So you could do this, you could do the taunt, you could just grab that. It's great. It's a great two points. 
right, this one's got the attack speed, and then we go into first to strike, last to fall. 30% increased damage when not on low life, 100% increased armor and evasion rating when on low life. Yeah, and status ailments are removed when you reach low life. Okay, so it has an effect when you're not on the life, and an effect when you're on the life. I like that. It's kind of like that other, the block talent from before. This one's cool. If you're just playing life based and you really want some extra tankiness, you get the damage when you're not in danger. 30% is good enough. Uh, and then when you get when you get down there, let's say you get frozen by a strong box. Your life gets drained. You, the status ailments come off. That's what the talent says. You get armor and evasion for that extra tankiness, that extra bit. Maybe you can escape with a leap slam or whirling blade, something. This, I really like this talent. It's really cool. And it, you could, with this, kind of have it like a switch if you played some edgy low life stuff and then you had a skill if you if you reserved your life just above low life and then you linked a skill to blood magic you could hit it get yourself to low life to know if you're gonna if you knew you were gonna take a big hit get the extra armor and evasion rating take off like a chill or an ignite or a shock i, I think that's a cool mechanic i really like this one it's it's different and you could do some wonky stuff with it now the stuff people have been uh, really freaking out about is uh, fortify stuff. Um, increased effect of fortify on you, 5%, that's what these nodes are, 5%, 5%. There's 15% I'm pretty sure on the tree right now, so that's 25, and then this one, unstoppable hero. 10% increased attack speed while you have fortify, 8% uh, increased movement speed while you have fortify, and 10% increased effect of fortify on you. So 20% increased effect here, and then 15% on the tree. For those of you who don't know, Fortify is just basically a 20% damage cut. So after everything that's calculated, Fortify gets calculated. Just You cut it in half. Well, no, not cut it in half. You take the 20%. So you can get 35% increased effect now. You could, that's like 27%. It's it's crazy. You, that's, it's really OP. And But I mean, you have to get the Fortify buff, so this isn't that great. I mean, it's kind of annoying to have to link stuff to Fortify. Oh, wait, you have Fortify. That's the thing people are freaking out about. This is an awesome talent. I really like it. People don't. People, well, some people don't. Some people are like, oh, it's so OP. But it's it's kind of fun because it just takes the stress off of building your character. You, you get that talent, the fortify, all the time. You don't have to waste a skill to try and activate it. You don't have to use it as a spell link to your uh, gem link to your main skill. It just gives you a defense that you don't have to think about or worry about so much. It just gives you some good mitigation so you can focus on maybe some of your other skills or other offenses. This is definitely a tank, definitely support with the taunt, with the aura. If you wanted to go solo play, do this fortify low life stuff, it def really cool. I, I really like this one. Um, plus, you get the, the buff to damage while you have fortify. It's a, it's a cool tree. I don't, I don't see anything too wrong with this, and plus, if you're a caster, you're still gonna, you could play this, because this is good enough, the attack speed doesn't pertain to you, and I know it's, again, just like the other thing I, before I said, it's a little weird to get out of the duelist area for a caster, but the fortify is so good, you could do some edgy stuff with this, it's, I, I like it, I really do. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the ascendancy trees, I'm, Really excited to see the Scion and some of the other ones that haven't been released yet. There's really good class flavor here. I, someone's got to wear a Bringer of Rain and play a Gladiator, please. It's just so good. You got the dps the kind of in the middle, and then you got this tank. Really awesome stuff. Uh, I hope you guys check out this expansion. I'm super hyped for it. Let me know what you guys think, and thanks for watching.